struggles, innovation, going all in, not holding back, mindset, being a leader, paving their own way, putting the real in real estate, raised with real estate, listing legacies, selling luxury. You have The Vault. Unlocking conversations in real estate today. We are live with The Vault. Unlocking conversations about real estate today. I'm your host, Jess, and let me introduce you to my co-host, Alexa. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us again. Today, I will be interviewing my co-host, Jessica Hastings Las Bronze. On top of raising three kids, she's a realtor and entrepreneur. Thank you, Jess, for letting me interview you today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. So let's start out. Tell our listeners a bit about yourself. So it's always a fun question. I am um, very busy. I wear many different hats. Um, let's start kind of back when I chose to be an entrepreneur. I finished university. My degree is in environmental studies in geography, and I also have a teaching certificate. And it was kind of when I finished my degree and realized that there wasn't really any work for where I want to live for what my degree was. And it was actually my husband who, at the time, he loved farming sheep, and I was not really considering myself a farm girl. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, why don't you open a store? And I said, well, what would we sell? And he goes, well, sheep, of course. So we did that. We actually got a grant for a first-time business owner, and we renovated half our house um, for an organic food store. And I did that for about six or seven years, and I loved it. It was great. It was, I learned a lot because of the service industry. So I learned a lot of systems and tools, how to speak to people. And I took those tools from that business and applied it into all the other businesses we did. So at that time when we had the store, uh, we also had about 200 sheep, a farm, And my husband had a tree removal business as well. And we, for some reason, agreed to be co-owners to a large fitness facility of about 200 members. So I'm also a fitness instructor. Um, It was actually really exciting last year, or actually this year, I was awarded one of the top Canada's fitness instructor for Impact Magazine for 2023. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And um, I actually put community involvement Uh, there as well. So I do a lot of things. So getting back to the businesses, we had four businesses and three kids. And then my dad passed away. And I remember thinking, I am so maxed. I'm sure probably makes people feeling a little bit overwhelmed having all these different things going on. And as I learned through business and career, you really want to start to focus on one thing and do that one thing really well. So My uh, parents were very large top producers in real estate, and of course, I've grown up with it. I've been raised with real estate. I've been around the conversations. I've got to meet the incredible people, and I also started to invest uh, with my husband, so we kind of flipped properties. We bought unique properties, and I started to really love that aspect about real estate, And it was about when my kids got a little bit older right now, they're 12, 8, and 4, that um, my mother actually suggested, I think you guys should consider real estate. And we thought about it. And of course, it was kind of scary at the time because, you know, we were talking, we have a farm, we have a gym, we have a food, organic food store. And now now you're throwing real estate at me. (laughs) So I remember thinking, you know, why not? Why why not? I've been raised with it. I know so much about it. Why not apply it? So we did that. My husband and I, we decided to sell everything. We sold everything and decided to really go in for one, one really good career. And I still love teaching and I still, um, I love that aspect about my life. So I opened my own yoga studio as well. And this was all at the beginning of COVID. So you can imagine um, having four businesses, three kids, we just built our house and Adam got his real estate license and we sold everything, went all in real estate. The studio is still being built. We go down to one income and COVID hits. Like we're literally in lockdown and we just sold everything. (laughs) 
I just remember thinking on that couch, well, we, we have to go all in because mm -hmm. there's no other option right now. Right. We have to support ourselves and our kids. So that's kind of my background of how I got started with real estate. Uh, my experience with being an entrepreneur, I feel that my husband and I are getting good at understanding the values and on how to build businesses and systems and formats in the coaching that's involved. And, you know, I love the back end of real estate of creating the cool marketing content. And, you know, Adam is not always his favorite. So I get to jump in and kind of dig in and just do cool ideas. Mm -hmm. And I, that's, that's what I love. And then my other part is I get to teach, train, and coach new realtors on everything we've learned. And being raised with real estate, of course, helps that. So um, being raised with real estate from one of the top producing agents in all of Canada, I have that, you know, that wonderful attribute there. Mm -hmm. So you wear a lot of hats. <laughs> um, talk a little bit about more so about your um, position with with the team that you're on. Um, and obviously you're a realtor now and you sell real estate, but I know you have a, a specific role with the team and running the team. So talk a bit about that. Yes, this is a great question. So I'm the director of operations for the Terry Hastings real estate group, and we have a team of 10 and I kind of like the, the role more as a visionary. So the director of operations to me sometimes sounds boring. And if anyone knows me, I'm unique. I get excited a lot. I definitely like, you know, fun, creative, inspiring things. I get bored quick. So I like exploring. I'm a very big risk taker. So my role here is I get to share everything that I know and have been raised with to the other agents so they can help grow their business. And it excites me so much when I get to share a new tip or tool or something I found that I think will work within their business and their goals. And it's just exciting. And so I get to, you know, dabble in different marketing pieces. I've been featured on major publications on TV and major media outlets. And that's because I just, I love sharing. I love the, the value of teaching something. Like why, to me, why would I want to hold that in? I want to share that so other people can be successful as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, What's the biggest challenge you face in your day-to-day -day life with your role as a mom, a realtor, an entrepreneur, yeah, director of the Terry Hastings Group? It's always, it, it gets busy, I'd say. I've learned to leverage and empower others to do certain roles. Um, I'd say right now we have uh, four or five staff who all contribute where their strengths are. Um and I'd say the challenge is always that work-life balance. I know we were mm -hmm. talking about this earlier. I totally agree. I think for me, I've come to realize, in my personal opinion, is there is no such thing as work-life balance. Mm -hmm. If you want something and you're really wanting to get it, it's kind of more like an, an equation. You know, how much am I going to put out and how long am I going to do that before I start to kind of equal that teeter-totter? So it's somewhat to the level where I feel at least comfortable with. Mm -hmm. There are times from being an entrepreneur and having so many businesses that I've learned at least there's like five or six month periods where you're just going, you're going, going, going. And then eventually everything kind of levels out and you get a little bit of a break. And, and that's what I've learned over the course of having so many businesses that it's just that time frame. And it's not like I can take a week off and then I work for a week because that's not really feasible. You know, we have three kids for their in a rep, soccer, gymnastics, tumbling, swimming. We have a lot of extracurriculars. Uh, I'm on, I volunteer weekly. So between me, my husband's and our kids, extracurriculars, fitting that in first and then we fit the business in and then we fit any extra time on top of that for the things we love to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, very good. So um, top producers in real estate and um, very successful entrepreneur, entrepreneurs sorry, typically have um, routines, whether it's a morning routine, an evening routine. What helps you um, be successful and um, balance your busy, crazy schedule? Yeah, 
It's always a good question. I feel right now, because my youngest, Nash, is four, he's still up through the night, that it's very kind of all over the place a little bit. The mornings aren't always what I want them to be. And I know that will change as he gets older, so sometimes I kind of just hang in there. I do know that my fitness is what keeps my mindset where it is. Um, I call it movement. I, I don't really call it exercising or working out because it's a lifestyle for me. Mm -hmm. So every morning I do something, whether it's running, you know, I, I teach pounds, so sometimes I'll just do my own pound class. I teach spin, so I'll just jump on the bike. Um, I'm also a yoga instructor, so I teach, I'll just do my own yoga. And every morning I, I fit it in when I can. So usually I wake up, I get the kids ready for school with Adam's help, and then I come home and I get my workout in, whatever I choose that day, and then I start my day. So my day does start a little bit later, usually around 11. And then I have to start going to get the kids around too, to pick them up from school. So there's like a very short amount of time that I'm able to get in what I need to do. Although I do get a lot done and am productive because we have a team within us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so valuable. So usually I pick the kids up from school. We go home, eat dinner, do homework, any extracurricular activities that day. And I usually try and fit in other items, you know, in between whatever I can. Because that's that, that's the life of a realtor. We fit it in. There's no, you know, I, we're good at time blocking, but sometimes it's, you know, they're in the bath and I'm sitting there watching them on my computer. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yep. laughs> so you're just fitting it in. And I, I'm clear with my kids. Hey, you know, we've, we've went for a walk. We've played on the swing. We've done whatever you want to do. I now need about 20 or 30 minutes of my time where I need to get some things done. Mm -hmm. And I've set that boundary and I'm clear with that standard. And, and they know, oh, mom's working right now. With our cow, she'll say, sorry, mom, can I interrupt you? I know it's your time. Wow. Yeah, so she's getting she's good trained. at that. <laughs> and I also learned I'm in the midst of publishing my first hard copy book, which will be out in August. So sometimes when I get really excited and I have a good chapter I want to write, I go and I power write mm -hmm. really quick as, you know, I'm doing dishes and there's a podcast going, I'm writing and the kids are going crazy and I'm, I just have to get it out. So it's, it's kind of just a mix of everything. It's, mm -hmm. it's not really a straight answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, if so, back to I, I want to touch on your businesses that you had sold pre COVID. If you had sold them and you didn't get into real estate, what would you be doing right now? That's a really good question. So, before I personally got into real estate, my husband, uh, we agreed that he was going to get his real estate license first. So, he did that. And, um, during that time, I focused a little bit more on the studio as I studied and I was bringing on very big clients. I had corporations reaching out to me, um, and, and cool people too, you know, people who have million dollar houses wanting to do private yoga. So I would travel a little bit here and there. I would get community reaching out to me. So I focused on that for a bit while I was studying mm -hmm. and then I wrote all my exams and then finally got my license and if anyone knows real estate, it's really difficult to do certain things when you don't have a license. So I don't know what we would be doing if we didn't do real estate because we always have been in it. We've flipped, we've built, we've have commercial units. We So there's always been that little investing side. And I know investing will always be a part of us, yeah. always. So it might maybe it would have been investing. Yeah, investing and you guys, I know you flip houses and resell them and you have some rentals and and things like that. So I think regardless of if you weren't, if you hadn't got your license or Adam didn't get his license, you'd be in real estate yeah. still. Yeah. Somehow. Some way, shape or form. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we're always, oh, grab that, grab that real estate magazine. And, yeah. you know, I love one of Adam's clients. She's my favorite and she's just so incredibly amazing. And I always ask her when she invites us over for champagne, you know, oh, how did that go? What did you do there? I want to learn, like, tell me how to do it, right? They were always calling my mom saying, how do we get our next property? I, I, I don't know what to do. We want to do it. And it was simple as leverage. Leverage your, leverage. your equity. Yeah, that's our favorite word on this podcast. Yeah, it is. Leverage. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what you guys, between you and Adam running this real estate team and running other businesses and having a family, what are some other future real estate 
endeavors that you want to do in your career? Yeah. Um, I always love this question. Mm-hmm. I love brainstorming the five-year goals. What are we doing? You know, our goal right now is definitely bringing on other agents who want to be on a team and showing them and leading them the way. Um, our goal is also to own more buildings that the offices are out of. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are starting to do that. And also maybe going a little bit wider with the area we service. I know our next goal would be to start servicing me for Thornberry, um, Collingwood way more. I'm in Collingwood at least monthly, and I just love love the community. Mm-hmm. Definitely Thornberry too. It's always just just beautiful. And I know there's service there that we we get inquiries here and there. So I know that there's people who are in need, for sure. Very cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see our our team um, grow into other areas and uh, have lots of rock star realtors join us yeah. on our adventures. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I would like to know, what advice would you give to someone looking to get into business? It's a great question. I think it's such an important question because if we don't know the reason why we're in our business – then it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. So we can think of, and I know I say this all the time, what is your why? Mm-hmm. It's a reason why you're here with that passion inside, that drive. You know, I, I think about my why all the time and it does change and that's okay. And I think it's being open to letting it change because we grow as people. Right. So if you know your why, you know your way. So really peel back those layers. One of... Um, A facilitator I was on a meeting with, he said, it takes seven layers to figure out your why. So write out your first instinct and then ask yourself, but why? And you keep doing that seven times until you're left with the core value. That strong core value will be strong enough to pull you through the hard times of your business and the good times too. Very cool. So that's what I would tell someone. Mm -hmm. You need to know the reason you're doing what your business is. Right. So when I interview um, agents who are inquiring to join our team, the very first question we ask is, what's your why? And it's very interesting. I'd say almost all of them, they don't know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even when I were training and coaching with, you know, top producers in the United States, even they're coaching and telling us, you know, a lot of people don't know their why. And so I wasn't really too shocked to see that, although it was really fun because there was a little coaching moment that we could tell these agents or these coming soon agents that, you know, really think about that. Think about, do you want to be an individual? Do you want to move on to a team? You know, what's, what's the purpose? What's the goal? What are the units you want to sell? What's the real reason you're sitting here today? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it's important to, when it comes to real estate, a lot of people will join thinking, oh, it's just a, it's an easy money-making career. And they don't see the background of what actually goes into it. And, and they truly don't have a why. Their why is, well, I just want to make good money with real estate. Yeah. But there, there isn't a, a proper why behind that. And that's why many people don't succeed. And that's business in general. It is, yeah. I would say even, you know, owning our businesses before, I would say mine, Adam's why wasn't very strong. I don't even know if we had one. Mm-hmm. Because if we did, would we have really took on four businesses with three kids? I'd say no, absolutely not. I came home one day, I put my hands up, said, I'm done. I'm out. And that's the day I said, I'm selling the business. You can do what you want with your business, but I'm done. I'm, yeah. I, with this, I think I was probably nine months pregnant. Wow. I'd be <laughs> I done just too. said, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So well. really being clear on the value of what you're wanting. Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay. So we're going to wrap it up soon, but I have one more question and that's what's one question you wish I asked you today Ooh. that I didn't ask? What my why is? Oh, shoot. We'll put that on the next uh, inter- <laughs> question with our next guest. <laughs> so what is your why? What is I your love big it. Why? So my why is, well, I have a couple of them and I flip flop between doing the seven layer thing. And so here's what they are. Number one is always you know, giving my kids the best future they can possibly have. And I know that's probably a common why, although mine goes a little bit deep, you know, coming from and earning everything from the ground up with myself and hearing other people's stories, I really want to set my kids up with a strong foundation for their future. So Adam, I said to Adam, my goal is I want a property per kid when they're old enough that they will get it 
and we'll teach them how to manage it and it will be income for them. And then I started thinking, well, we've already attained that goal. What if we now double it? They each get two. Wow. And then I said to Adam, the, the reason for that is, is because you know, of course we teach work ethic and ethics and morals into our kids. Mm-hmm. But the last thing we really want to see as a parent is, you know, grinding, working, you know, what is it, hours for dollars. Mm-hmm. There's so much more we can do with, with who they are as individuals and what they can do can open up. You know, yeah. we have very smart children and they, you know, as I said, they're already in an academic family. So it's not a question of if, it's just what they choose to do with it. And if they can have the financial security to really choose what they really love and want to do and not have to, you know, work and and grind first to get later, isn't that kind of cool? Wouldn't Mm. that be a possibility for our kids? Yeah. I think if every parent could do that, they would. Yeah. So I think that's amazing. So I think that that's what drives Adam and I is you know, those long nights, those calls, you know, lack yeah. of time together sometimes as well. We do make up for it, but as, as a real life of a real estate agent is, and when you have three kids, the kids are always, you know, uh, kind of top of the list, <laughs> <laughs> even though we're taught that, you know, the relationships first. Um, and the other why is being able to be an independent woman uh, as well. To me, it's important that I hold my own and I've always been an independent person. And I think that's my other part of my why is I do what I do because if anything ever happened, I want to be able to support myself and my three kids no matter what. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that's amazing. That's very important. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time to let me interview you on yeah. our podcast. Where can our listeners find you online? Oh, that's amazing. I love it. So, um, Terry Hastings of course, on the website, mm-hmm. and um, I also have a landing page raised with real estate. And my focus is um, listing legacies, selling luxury. So I love getting into the luxury market there. And um, Cedar Wellness Studio is the studio where we teach from. And I have to say, I'm excited. My book is coming out in August which is um, kind of an off topic. It's about anxiety and school for kids. And then I have another book coming out in the fall that I haven't even told anybody about yet. I don't even think Adam knows. (laughs) (laughs) You're hearing it here first, folks. Yeah, so you're getting the first one. So hopefully that'll be out in the fall. And that's based on um, just everything business, business mindset, um, uh, being your inner you, um, persevering in business, women in business. I've mm-hmm. just took everything and collaborated it into one piece. And this is going to be a game changer, I feel. This is I, like I'm going all in with this one. Mm-hmm. Incredible. Can't wait for that one. Yeah. I'm excited. Awesome. Okay. So, yeah, well, thank and you. then on social media as well, Instagram, Facebook, we have a variety of them. So just type something in. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find us somewhere. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for listening. And thanks again, Jess. Thanks See so you much. Soon. Okay.